Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, thanks for all the questions. I asked not just on the video, uh, but also several places that I normally post uh, links to the video. And a bunch of you came through, um, so I have a ton of questions. Um, several of you asked very similar questions, so I kind of morphed those into uh, single questions where I could um, to kind of help things out. So uh, let's get rolling with the first question is, um, what is my profession and does it help, uh, is, is is it how I learned how to do this kind of work? Um, kind of. Um, I work in live entertainment. I build jumbotrons for concerts, corporate events, um, sports, stuff like that. Um, that didn't really help with this kind of stuff. But I have, um, I did do some plumbing for a summer for a friend in Seattle um, a decade ago. Um, and he did residential repipes, where he replaced uh, old crappy galvanized and replaced it with copper. We did like one house in CPVC, but. Um, so that's kind of how I learned that kind of stuff. Uh, my mentor growing up, the captain, he um, he was always working on his houses doing stuff, so I learned a bit from him. My father was an auto mechanic. I never really helped him work stuff, um, and he was always working on cars and the cabin and stuff like that. But, um, you know, seeing, growing up, seeing your father do kind of stuff just kind of made you realize that, hey, humans can do this kind of stuff. Like, and I'm one of those. That helps. Um, I, like... I grew up fixing my own bicycles. Um, he, I mean, he, I, I got to use his tools, but he didn't like that I didn't put them back where they belonged. Um, I, my very first car caught on fire the second day I had it, it had an electrical fire, and so I had to fix that. Um, I couldn't pay somebody to fix it. Um, and uh, it later had a gas fire, um, leaky gas line caught on fire. Um, and then, uh, later had an oil fire. So it was on fire three times before I got rid of it. Um, and it was a terrible car, awful car. And then the guy who bought it, it was perfectly reliable for him and he loved it. So go figure. Um, but I always had to like fix my own cars and stuff like that. The, you know, a few times I've ever subbed out, um, like for cars ever subbed out working, uh, work to someone else, it's gone poorly. So I just always just figured it's best to do it myself. Um, I... I worked in a sawmill. Um, that didn't really help with all this kind of stuff. I did fast food stuff. I worked in car audio um, doing installs. Um, and I built some pretty cool stuff. I helped build a, a car that did 172.2 decibels, which at the time was a world record. It's a pretty crazy, crazy, crazy loud car. A little Geo Metro that had five subwoofers in it. Um, that kind of stuff. Uh, like that helps take the fear out of doing things. Um, and that's half the battle. Just get, get a you're not afraid of doing anything. Um, learning how to take things apart, learning how to, um, just how things work physically. Um, that really just, once you kind of get a general understanding, you can kind of look at things and just be like, oh, I think, and then kind of go from there. Um, and once once you're not afraid of just jumping in, then it, the rest becomes pretty easy. Um, no matter what, you're gonna fuck things up here and there. So you might as well just jump in and do it anyway. Um, if you're halfway mechanically inclined, um, you will save a lot more money even after fucking up a few things here and there than you ever will by um, uh, paying someone else to do it. Um, I, I drove trucks. That didn't really help out. I did a million miles in semi-trucks, though. Um, and then live entertainment, like we we there's lots of stuff lots of situations that, that come along and you just have to fix it it doesn't matter what it is you have to fix it you have to get it working you get gear thrown in front of you all the time that you've never seen before in your life and you have to work with it and make it do what it's supposed to do um and the ability to just jump in and do it that really takes the fear of doing things away um but that's that's about it um i so it's kind of a big fat maybe kind of sort of not really um next question is um what does this whole thing cost and what is my budget um i don't have a budget uh the house costs 90 90 grand um which is far less than most of the stuff in the neighborhood um and you know when it's all done i think it'll easily be worth 300 so i think i think it's a fair deal um 90 grand is about what the flippers were offering I'm tracking costs, so I don't really have a budget. Um, I don't know what it's going to actually cost. I've never been financially responsible for a project like this. I've helped. I've helped plenty of times with friends and, and whatnot, but I've never actually um, had to pay the bills myself, so I don't know what it's going to cost. Um, I 
do know that I've spent almost a thousand dollars in tools so far. Um, I track all the expenses actually. So, um, right down to the penny. Um, I, I spent $797 on the back room, which seems extreme. Um, since it looks like I mostly just painted it, but, um, I bought all that, the wood trim and stuff was pre-painted. Um, I made a couple mistakes in buying paint. Um, I bought a lot more mud than I needed, which is now being used in the other room and the mistake paint is going to be used in the other room as well. Um, so total between sharing costs that that cost is actually lower i'm still going to spend another 150 200 bucks on a door for the room so total it'll be uh about a thousand dollars um and i'm expecting uh that's a i'm i'm, I'm guessing about 700 dollars for the other room um it's going to cost quite a bit in um uh, flooring because the the carpet was glued down to that tile so i can't just leave the tile like i didn't in the first room so kind of a bummer but that is what it is um as far as expenses go um the first month the uh heat and uh basically the gas and electric bill is rolled into one and that was 120 bucks so not bad but that was october that was before it got cold uh last month it was 300 bucks um total living expenses and mortgage bills everything rolled into one uh it's looking about 1200 ish um so it's not awful um it's totally manageable um i could easily live here by myself and just slow way down to the work and not have a problem um but renting out will um really help out with the budget um What's the timeline for the project? Um, the timeline is purely dictated by money and time. Um, I work full time. Uh, so I work a few hours on the house at night, maybe one to, to three hours when I get home from work. And some nights I don't do any work at all. Mondays I work on the videos. Um, sometimes I take Tuesday, maybe even Wednesday off and don't do anything and just kind of uh, um, surf the internet and relax um definitely spend a bunch more time on the weekends as uh entertainment picks back up uh my weekends will be more tied up so i'll spend less time on the house during the weekends but more on the evenings um but i'm expecting it takes somewhere uh, around a year or so to be completely done with this top floor so i've gutted the room on the other side um and I still need to finish the other side of this wall and the ceiling above it. Um, and then I need to uh, finish up pulling up the subfloor and um, see what wires I need to re relocate, that kind of stuff. But uh, when I get done with that room, I'm going to move from this room into that room. And I'm going to do the same exact thing here um, with the only couple small changes being I need to add a wall between the hallway and that closet and um the subwoofers for the living room are going in the crawl space back there and i need to build enclosures for them so they have down fire into the living room but they're also quiet enough that the person living in this room isn't annoyed whenever someone watches a movie or something um and then i need to do the bathroom up here the blue bathroom that's no longer blue because there's no nothing to paint um so i suspect it's going to take about a year or so that's my guess um maybe less maybe more but when these rooms are done and the bathroom is done the stairs the hallway the whole area is done basically from the bottom step up except for the it room i'm not going to touch that for quite a little while um then i'm going to move the two renters up here and then i'm going to take those two bedrooms and do the exact same thing down there um, i'm going to completely gut those rooms and uh one by one i'll live in one and work on the other and i kind of i kind of want to do that so that i'm not disturbing the person staying in the room right next to the one being worked on um and then after those rooms are done i need to do the hallways the bathroom um all that that whole area basically that whole floor it's kind of like a five-story house but not really um but uh, i need to do that whole area and uh, i think that'll take me another year after that i have no idea how long it'll take me um it's just wild i i, I don't know and getting these the bedrooms done will give me a better idea what pace I can actually work at. Um, am I going to keep the house or flip it? Um, that's a common question. I'm definitely going to keep the house. Uh, the first day I, I came here, I parked in the driveway. I got out of the, the, the truck and I kind of walked around the front of the house and I looked at it. I was like, ooh, this is rough. Ooh, maybe this not might not be the best idea. Then I walked around the driveway and I saw that garage and I was like, oh, okay, this is it. This is the place. Between the creek and the garage, this is the place. Especially 
um, when I went in the garage and I saw just how big it is. And they got the big backyard and everything, so it's just a nice place to relax. I'm definitely keeping it. Um, one of the ultimate goals is when the house is done is to build the loft of the garage into a living space for me. Um, and then I can rent out all four rooms in this house and essentially that'll replace my current income. And, um, at that point I, I, uh, if I continue working, I can trim back how much I work, take less of, uh, an income and, um, work less hours and, um, enjoy a more relaxing life and maybe take on another project. Um, or I can, you know, just bank that extra money. Um, I don't know what exactly what I'm going to do yet. Um, it just depends on how I feel at the time, I guess. Um, I really like where I'm working. I'm not trying to get out of it. Um, amazing people where I work. Um, so um, I don't want to just bail after, you know, my guess is five years till I'm moving out there. I don't know. Um, what's the neighborhood like? Any crime issues? Are the neighborhood neighbors friendly? Um, before I moved in, I actually talked to several neighbors around here. Um, all the neighbors are friendly. Um, there's nobody in that little house next to me. Did basically the house right outside the the window of the bedroom I'm working on. That house is for sale. It's for sale for 150 grand, um, and it looks like it's getting that price uh, or probably more. Um, the guy on the other side, super nice guy. Can't, he can't hear for a squat, but super nice guy. Um, guy across the street from him he's been here since 1981 he knows everything about this neighborhood always willing to, to um bs and um share things uh when i was dragging uh when i was dragging giant black trash bags out of here he let me actually um put some out next to his trash can so the the trash man would take it um and I had to spend less on dumpsters and stuff like that and just get rid of junk uh he also um offered me a big stack of lumber i need to actually still go get that um, guy, other guy across the street. Um, he's actually, he worked with the owner of the company I worked for for a long time. Super nice guy. Um, talked to him regularly. Got a uh, lady next to them. Super nice lady. Um, guy on the other side, nice guy. He warned me when I talked to him, he's like, I'm the loud guy in the neighborhood. So just so you know. And then, um, the first time I heard loud music coming from his house, it was Dixieland jazz. I was like, okay, we're, this is not going to be a problem at all. Um, people right next door in the little white house, um, super nice people. Uh, he's a tile setter. Um, I don't know what she does, but, um, talk to them regularly. Um, great, great little neighborhood. Um, no crime. It's a blue collar neighborhood. Um, I haven't seen anything crime. Someone's asked specifically about the bike being in the window. And the only people that see that bike are the people in the house next to me and the trespasser, whoever that is. Um, and, um, but like, I'm not concerned. I do close the drapes every night just so that the, uh, the home theater rack isn't and the TV aren't just kind of staring at somebody walk, walking by cause the windows are pretty big, but I'm not actually that concerned about it. Um, I met a couple down the road The I got that green drywall. Uh, I posted on next door just asking if anybody has some scraps so I can patch that hole and they gave me almost an entire sheet super friendly couple uh, i met a couple up the street um super super nice couple um everybody i don't know it's just really nice middle class neighborhood um like not flashy um not run down like i have, I definitely have the most run down house on the street um but i don't know really nice nice and quiet very, very quiet neighborhood what do i plan to do about the trespasser um at the moment, it's just lock the gate. Uh, that's the easiest, fastest, cheapest solution. Spent, you know, what, 12, 14 bucks on a piece of chain, and I had locks sitting around, so it's not a big deal. I do actually have a combo lock. Uh, I forgot the combo, so um, when I'm sitting around doing nothing, I just kind of run through the numbers, start at one, and work my way up. The worst case is, like, it's a 99, 99, and I didn't get the combo. Um, but uh, I've, I've cracked a lock like that before. Um, there's there's probably a much faster way to cracking it. If someone local in the area wants to crack the lock, by all means, contact me. Then then the roommates can have the uh, the lock combo. Um, but uh, for now, it's just keep the thing locked. If I catch the person, um, part of the reason for putting the camera on the side of the house was to catch them. And uh, they actually went by after the camera went up, and um, I just didn't have the sensitivity on the motion zones set properly so i didn't catch them and i know they went by because there were footprints in the snow and there were um dog tracks next to those footprints 
The thing is, the guy who I thought it was in the house directly behind me, it's not him because he doesn't have a dog. So it's someone else. It might be the house on the other side. I haven't met those people. I don't know. Um, so I'm not sure who it is. Um, but I will this summer. I do want to replace the whole fence along the whole perimeter, replace the gate in the driveway, um, the fence over where I did the uh, fiber line on the side of the house. It has like barbed wire on the top of it. Um, the, the chain link fence on the house between myself and the, the house for sale. There's um, there's dead trees woven through the chain link and stuff like that. Um, so I think I just want to replace it all. And I'm. Um, and I might want to go for uh, a wood fence and just because it'll look better. Um, but I'm not sure. Um, but definitely, like, at the very least, replace the fence along the back of the house. So it's one continuous piece and um, it's harder for someone to hop over and go walking through the yard. And I think my guess is the person is just simply using it as a shortcut. Um, the footprints in the snow were going one direction. They didn't come back. Uh, do any neighborhood neighbors know that I'm making videos? Um, the guy up the street does that I met a couple days ago um, with a little Ford for sale. Um, and the the couple I got the drywall from, I don't think I've mentioned it to anybody else. I might have. Um, if I men mentioned to the old man who's been here since 1981, he, um, I doubt he watches. Um, his his favorite pastime is sitting on the front porch so i don't think he's much of a youtuber but i could be wrong if so hi walt um but uh yeah the couple i got the drywall from hello um the guy up the street hello nick um but i i don't think anybody else i don't know i just i guess it hasn't come up um what's the winter weather like um it's been snowy for the last month or so. Um, just traces here and there, maybe an inch every now and then. It's snowing right now. I think we're expecting three inches. But for the most part, it's been in the 30s during the day and getting down into the 20s at night. Um, and I'm not made for this kind of weather anymore. I spent five-ish years on the golf tours where all year round I just chased good weather. And I'm not used to cold weather again. Um, and it's also humid here. So the cold is colder than it is on the West Coast where I'm from, um, where there's no humidity. Um, the hot is hotter. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the humidity, but um, I've lived in a humid place before. I'll get over it. It's not the end of the world. Um, although it would be nice if someone would just in, install a whole state dehumidifier. That'd be amazing. Um, what am I doing with the windows? This is by far the number one question I get. And absolutely i have to say the window manufacturing industry has done a great job at marketing if this is the number one question that i get um from what i what i understand uh yes new windows do offer uh double pane and triple pane windows do offer better insulation than the current single pane stuff i have um however i from what i can tell it's not the miracle pill that people seem to think it is um it will offer improvement in in um in like this desk right here i mean i i finally hung curtains up you can see those and they they did actually make an improvement in how just how cold this desk gets so um so it will make an improvement to add double pane windows um but I'm not sure if replacing the whole frames is the way to go. I think maybe just replacing the glass with double pane glass might be the way to go. It keeps the charm of the original metal windows and they won't be too bad to um, refinish. Uh, mostly just strip the paint. Um, there's many layers and years of paint on there. Strip the paint, um, go to town with some putty. I'm getting much better at doing that. Um, strip the paint, repaint it, go over the mechanicals, oil things that need to be oiled, fix anything that needs to be fixed. Um, I think removing these frames is going to be a nightmare because if you look in the other room over there where uh, I've torn everything out around the window, it looks like the window frame is actually sandwiched between the brick and the block. And so removing it is basically going to be taking the grinder and just cutting the whole thing out. And um, I like the charm of the old school windows. I like uh, I like a lot of things about them. So I think maybe keeping them and going double pane glass is the way to go. Um, and that's also a lot cheaper. And I can do that as I do each individual room versus um, trying to save up and wait to do the entire house at once or something like that. Um, and I can do it versus paying someone else to do it. 
Uh, what is the source of the creek and where does it go? I got several variations on this question. Um, the actual source of the creek, I have no idea. Um, there's there's a section in the neighbor in the white na- white house neighbor's front yard where uh, it's exposed. They said it's sewer, but that doesn't add up because it doesn't smell like anything. Um, I think it's just runoff from streets and from various backyards and stuff. I can't see it anywhere on the satellite imagery, and it doesn't show up on any kind of maps I can find. Um, it doesn't. It's not a named creek, um, which means I don't think the city really cares about it. Um, and I'm not inside the city of Cincinnati. I'm just outside the city, but I don't think the, the city I'm in cares about it. I'm not sure that the county cares about it. Um, and I just simply because it's not named. Um, but where does it go? I don't know either. It goes into the neighbor's yard and then it goes underground. It looks like it might come out from underground on the other side of his yard. Um, but there's too much tree cover for that to show up, um, on the satellite imagery upstream there's not much tree cover at all and you just can't see it but downstream there's too much trees you can't see where it goes um but i do know this whole area used to flood regularly and uh they uh according to the guy across the street they fixed the flooding problem in the late 80s and it hasn't flooded since and actually half this property is in a fema flood zone the house is not the neighbor's house is the one for sale those people have to pay for flood insurance this one doesn't um but uh I think wherever that flooding water normally goes is where uh, where the creek goes. And the creek doesn't run all the time. It only runs when it's raining. Um, and the video, the clip I started, I think the beginning of last week, a uh, little clip of the water running, that's the most I've seen it run. Um, and I think it runs a bit more in the spring um, based on the storms I saw when I came and visited it in the spring. Um but it doesn't really much run much more than that, and then it's dry most of the summer. Um, what I'm going to do about it, I need to move it away from the garage, and that's an opportunity to expand the driveway some. But all that concrete, as you saw, is bad, it's broken. Um, I don't know how much is actually washed away underneath it, so I need to break up all the concrete, uh, just go out of town with a jackhammer over the course of a weekend or, or maybe even an entire week, I don't know. Um, but I figure I could take those blocks... Um, and uh, move the creek and then use those that broken up concrete as rocks and shore up the creek and kind of keep it from eroding like it did this time and maybe even add a pond i don't know um but that's kind of thing and then someone asked specifically about keeping roommates from driving their car into the ditch and that's a legit problem um well it hasn't happened yet but it can be a problem um so i think maybe building like a state park style fence um and um, specifically like Washington state parks have some great fences in there that are designed to be heavy duty and look good in a park. So I think maybe mimicking those designs is the way to go. Um, someone asked why prep all the rooms if I'm just going to tear them apart? And that's a valid question. Um, so like I said, it costs, I'm in a, for about a thousand bucks total when I'm done with a blue room, um, which will be this week. And then my guess is I'll be about 700 ish into the front room. And, um, but basically renting it out, I'm going to, I'm, I've already rented out the back room. The guy moves in this weekend. Um, and that's 500 bucks a month for rent. Um, so that, that rent in two months pays for all the work I've done. And then from there, that's just a net um, gain coming into the house and that'll help pay for more work on the house. Um, and same thing in the front room. Um, when I'm done with that one, it'll be under two months to pay back for all the work I've done on it. Um, so absolutely it is a money maker to do the work now, even if I'm going to undo it all and tear it all apart later. Um, so that's, that's not bad. Um, that's the kind of, uh, kind of numbers I like. Um, how many renters am I going to have? That's a really good question. Um, so I'm not going. I'm I'm going to stay living in the rooms next to the room I'm working on. So as I'm working on that room, I'm staying in here. When that room is done, I'm moving over there, and then I'm going to work on this room. That way, I'm not disturbing the people renting. And then when it comes time, I'm going to um, when these rooms are done, I'm going to move them up here, and I'm going to move down there and do the same thing down there. Um, so that means while a bedroom is being worked on, there will only be two renters. 
Um, once all the bedrooms are done, then I'll add the third renter. And then um, from there, um, I'll, I'll work on various things. And when I move out to the garage, I will, uh, I will live out there and then rent out all four rooms individually. And um, that, that, I think that'll work out pretty well. Um, a good question someone asks is, how's everyone gonna park? Um, so I need to finish doing some work on the, on the driveway. And then um, once the uh, next dumpster comes and I get the garage all cleared out, um, I'm gonna move the Bronco over one spot and then I'm going to park the Miata in the garage daily. And then um, in front of the downstairs, uh, the single car garage in the house where the sliding glass door is, um, someone can park there. There's a great spot um, at the end of the driveway, kind of by the old brick um, cooking spot uh, between the, the tree and the fence for someone to park. And if someone have multiple cars, that's where they should park. I'll, I think I'll put some gravel down um, and then uh, they'll have a great spot to park. And if they have two cars, they can manage that themselves. And there's a spot parallel to the driveway right out front. Um, and there's actually lots of street parking. So if people have guests over and stuff, people can park on the street in this, like not directly in front of the house, but just up the block, um, going, going, uh, basically my house is at the top of a T. So as they go down the T, um, someone asked about this. It's actually a fairly common question about asbestos in the house. Um, I haven't seen anything that concerns me yet. Um, the concern is a funny thing. Uh, the range of concern goes from, uh, boy, you should just have that for, uh, uh, for your breakfast every morning. You'll be fine to all the way to, Oh my God, you looked at it. Your lungs are going to fall out. No, no, no. Um, the appropriate level of concern is somewhere in the middle. The important thing is that, uh, asbestos is fibrous material. It looks like fibers and, um, almost like hair, um, kind of like fiberglass. Um, and nothing I've pulled up has that kind of texture to it. Um, the biggest concern that people seem to pop up is these tiles. And I, um, the tiles break cleanly. There's no fibers inside of them when they do break. And most of them come up whole when I pull them up. Um, so I'm not really concerned about that. Um, the insulation inside of these walls and ceiling um, is rock wool. I don't know exactly what it's based on, but it's not asbestos. Um, so I'm not really concerned about that. The only other concern, um, is just in general, keeping dust down as I'm working. Um, and I do need to make some improvements in how I do that and also get some better masking. Um, and then the other, only other concern is lead paint. Um, and I'm not too concerned about that. I think it's the same thing. Don't breathe it in. Don't eat it. Don't throw it in your cornflakes. Um, but, uh, I'm not doing a lot of these two rooms I'm working on. Yes, I'm sanding the paint there. And if it is lead based, that might be a problem. Um, mostly a problem for me because everything settles and I vacuum it all up with that cool vacuum. Um, outside of that, every other place I'm going to be working on paint, I'm ripping the paint out and it's going out the door on the drywall it originally came in. Yes, some of it will get broken up and stuff as I tear the drywall apart, but that's just part of what that is. Um, so I'm not really too concerned about creating health hazards in the house. Uh, yeah, so I mentioned tearing down the chimney um, because it's not in great condition. Um, I don't think it's in danger of falling over, um, but basically what happens is... Um, I think it's called peaking and tucking is where you go in and remove the mortar and then um, reapply it. And that hasn't been done in a long time. And water's been getting inside the bricks. And then when the water freezes, the bricks explode. Um, either they explode or they just break apart. Um, and that's what I showed you in the video last week or the week before. Um, and that's what's happening to that chimney out there. And I haven't seen that happening anywhere. It's called spalling. I haven't seen that spalling happening anywhere else. So that's a good thing. Um, but yes, I do need to remove it. Um, replacing and fixing chimneys is ridiculously expensive. Um, that could easily be a $20,000 job to fix that chimney. And that's nuts. Um, but removing a chimney is dirt cheap all you need is a hammer and a chisel and uh you just break the mortar between the bricks and then you can remove the bricks whole and um set them aside do whatever you're gonna do so i think um what i'm gonna do is 
keep all the bricks that are in good condition and put them on a pallet, put them in the garage. And then as I need to do work on the rest of the house, I then have bricks that are aged appropriately for the house. So if I need to replace something here and there, I'm not putting a brand new brick into a house and then it stands out like a sore thumb. I'll have a brick that looks like it belongs in the house and it'll be great. Um, and then basically by removing that chimney, the foundation underneath it looks fine. So I can just kind of square off that room and I gain a little bit of square footage here. Um, but I can square that off and um, just kind of make more, um, some better use of that space. That whole room back there, I just kind of want as a, I want to put in a good quality door between it and the kitchen and the and good quality windows there so that people can hang out in that room. Roommates can have guests over and stuff and they're not going to be disturbing other people in the house. It'd be nice and quiet the rest of the house. Um, so that's kind of the idea for that room. And... Um, pretty much everything in that room has to get torn out. I'm. It may be at the point that that entire room has to actually get leveled and rebuilt from scratch um, because it's it's in really bad shape. Um, other than termites, are there any other invasive things in this house? Any living things? Um, so the termites are gone. That's the good news. There are lots of damage left behind, but they're gone. Um, I have seen no signs of termites. I've seen some silverfish from what I've the I've done a little bit of research in the silverfish and they're not dangerous to the house. They're not dangerous to humans. They're just obnoxious. Um, so that's good news. Um, and I haven't seen many since um, it's been a couple months. They should, I mean, if there's lots of silverfish here, I should have seen them by now in the wintertime, but I haven't. So they're gone. Um, there were tons in the garage, lots and lots and lots in the garage. It was like tear out a panel and then squish away um, and chase them around. Um, but they're, uh, they appear to be gone out of the garage as well. Um, they, they don't like humans going around and doing their things. Um, in, in the second week living here, I saw a mouse in the kitchen. And, um, I haven't seen any signs of mice since then. Um, I don't know where it ran away to. It's gone. It didn't die in here cause I can't smell it, but, um, it's gone. Um, that's a good thing. Um, but I haven't seen any signs. There's no poops. There's no, uh, there's nothing torn up and eaten. I've, um, on occasion, I see a dead stink bug here and there. I don't know where they're coming from. And I looked down there because I saw one on the creepy clown one day. Uh, um, but I don't know where they're coming from. Um, and same thing. They're not harmful. Um, they're just weird, gross for little creatures. Um, and again, we don't have those in the Pacific Northwest where I'm from. So I, I don't, it's just bizarre. There's this bug that stinks the whole place up if you squish it. Um, but that's it. That's all I've seen. Um, at some point in time, apparently there were dogs, wild dogs living in the garage. Um, I don't know um, why they disappeared. If they were, if 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 the people knew about them and made them go away, but there's been no signs of any creatures living out there. Lots of silverfish when I tore it apart, but no signs of anything currently out there. Um, and I should have seen something by now. It's winter time. Like you should have seen something if there's anything out there. Um, so that's good. I haven't seen anything. Um, if I had the money to sub one job out. Um, the I'm gonna I'm probably gonna do the roof myself on this house. I mean, it obviously needs it, um, but um, I think I'm gonna sub the flashing out on the roof because that's like doing the rest of the roof is relatively easy. It's just labor intensive, um, but I think getting the flashing right is one of those things where you can easily. I understand the concepts, but I haven't done it myself, um, so. I think it's better to hire that part out and have somebody else do it and get it done right. And then I can go and do everything else after that. And that's not a big deal. And when I do the roof, I'm also going to do all the fascia boards just like, um, and replace all the gutters, just like the one I did, um, outside that bedroom over there. And, um, that'll make for a much better looking house and, um, solve a whole lot of problems around here. Um, I may sub out part of, um, moving the Creek, find someone with a piece of equipment that can come in and just spend a day digging back there and uh, moving the creek away from the buildings and expanding the driveway. Um, that seems like money well spent versus spending half a summer out there with a shovel and a pickaxe digging away. And um, when the house is done and it comes time to work on the garage so that I can move out there, um, I think 
half or maybe two thirds of the roof needs to be raised up a few feet so that I get more space, more usable floor space. And that will definitely sub somebody out for that. Um, I don't, I don't want to take the risk of doing all that myself and getting something, some basic fundamental thing wrong and having a huge safety problem. Um, and I keep looking over there because I, I made a keynote. Um, so I can just kind of look at these things. So, What's my most cherished tool or favorite tool? Um, favorite tool is uh, what's called a power probe. It's used in cars. Um, it's not it's not a home tool for working on homes, um, but uh, it's it's a really fancy test light. It can tell you the voltage of the circuit you're working on. It can tell you if uh, what you're touching is a positive or a ground. You can send power out into a circuit with it. Um, pretty nifty tool, but it's one of those things. If you're not like I used it um, left and right when I was doing alarms and stuff. Um, but if you're not doing that kind of stuff, um, it's one of those things. Like I, I, I probably haven't touched it in the last year or so. Um, it's just, um, although I did use it a lot when rewiring the Bronco. Um, it was super helpful then. Um, so what is the home network doing? That's kind of a catch-all question because I had a bunch of questions about the home network. So part of that goes into the goals of the house. Um, as people live here, I want them for it to feel like it's their own network, like or for it's their own house. Like one house I lived in, everybody had to use the guest network. And the downside of that was um, every device was isolated from each other. So if you had two devices that normally talk to each other over Wi-Fi, you couldn't do it. Um, just um, I had to literally use a VPN to remote into a computer that was sitting in the same room with me. Um, kind of a pain in the ass. I don't want people to have that experience. I want them to be able to see all their own devices on the network and do their things, but I don't want them to see other people's devices. So everybody's going to get their own VLAN and they can't cross communicate with each other. Everybody's going to get their own, um, or not their own, but everybody's going to have access to the pie hole, the network wide ad blocker. Um, and they'll have their own user accounts so they can turn it on or off as they need to for their thing. Um, I have a home assistant running in the house and, um, I just kind of basically got it set up and monitoring things right now. It's not actually using it, but as the house gets more smart things in it. Um, home assistant kind of ties all that stuff together. So you don't have an app for this thing and an app for that thing. You just have one app that does it all. Um, basically set up users, uh, uh, renters as users in the, uh, app so that, um, they can control whatever's in their room and whatever's in the common spaces. Um, but not whatever's in someone else's room or something like that. And also they will, that will, um, when done right, it will allow them to like, I'm going to install speakers in the bathrooms and probably in the bedrooms too. So they'll have access to those and they can just play it over the network versus, um, you know, walking around with a Bluetooth speaker or something like that. And the other thing I want to add part of the network is a, uh, RFID system for getting in and out of the house. Um, that way I won't have to hand over physical copies of the keys. And I'm going to do this in the next month or two. Um, that way there's, I, I know that there's no just tons of physical copies of the key out in the wild. Um, if someone leaves and uh, I can just deactivate the card and it's done. One of the things I want is also is for every single room to have um, ethernet drops to the room. Um, every single wall have at least one on it, one um, junction box on it with two ports on it with at least one of those having PoE available and then have a third line in the wall just in case one of them is bad. So basically three runs to each box. And then someone asked specifically about um, why if I have servers do I need to buy a bunch of hard drives? And that's because of this thing called shucking. And basically um, for some stupid reason, hard drive companies uh, sell hard drives in those enclosures cheaper than if you buy the drive bare. And I don't mean like $5 cheaper. I mean like 20, 25% cheaper. Um, so it's actually easier or much cheaper to buy that enclosure and then pull the drive out of it and throw the enclosure away than it is to buy the bare drive. Um, so that's how I get more storage is to do that. And then um, what I'm experimenting with right now is a, um, so I use the Drobo <clears throat> for the main storage on the, the main server, um, the Mac mini that's my main server, because um, I use Backblaze for my backups um, and it's $6 a month to back up a computer and any 
phys, um, directly attached drives. Um, so it's six dollars a month to back up um, what is essentially ten terabytes of data. It's dirt cheap. If I were to use the network drive as the primary storage for that, we're looking now um, at using a different service. And uh, I did it before with Amazon, and it got over, to be over a hundred dollars a month. It's just freaking nuts. Um, so. I exploit that little loophole from from Backblaze. They know people like me do this, um, and then basically the um, server. As I'm working on the Ceph storage cluster, um, it'll become the backup for that drive. Um, that way, if when the Drobo will eventually ship the bed, it's what Drobos do. Um, and uh, so when that happens, then I'll switch over to that little four beta array. Um, right now, it has an exact copy of everything that's on the Drobo. It'll be painless to switch over. And then um, uh, any good drives out of it will go into the, the cluster, and then that cluster will be the backup. And the cool thing about using Ceph for the file system is um, it's not a RAID array. Um, it, it, it works in a, a wildly different fashion. The cool thing about it is a, any of those three blue computers can completely crash and everything stays up and running. You're not losing any data. You're not missing anything. It might run a little slower, but you're not missing anything. Um, and then you have time to get it all up and working again. It's not a big deal. If you want to expand it, you just pop another drive in, tell it you're expanding it, and off you go. Um, you can actually add more computers to it, more uh, nodes, and off you go. It doesn't doesn't need anything super special to figure out. Just go with it. Um, so that's what I'm doing with that. Um, and then um, someone asked specifically about the make and model of the security cameras. Um, I'm using the Ubiquiti Protect system. Um, I don't like that it's all closed off. Like it's not, the cameras are not compatible with other systems and other systems cameras are not compatible with, with it. I don't really like that, but I do like the ease of, of how easy it went together. It's super simple. Um, the cameras are PoE, they're good quality, um, 1080p, 25 frames a second. Um, they see great at night, um, They're and they're only 90 bucks a piece. You can go with their nicer ones, but the G3 G Flexes are what I'm using, and they're great. Um, they're all I need for what I'm doing. Um, it's right in, the, right in the sweet spot of the budget. Um, although I suspect they're probably going to end the G3 line within the next year or so. And I think that wraps it up for everything. Um, I'm going to do some mild rebranding on the page. Not, I'm not changing what I'm doing. I'm not none of that. But basically, as random people come across the videos, um, they're going to pop in and see something like week 11, and they're like, "Ooh, maybe I don't want to." You know, as it gets suggested, maybe I don't want to see this because I don't want to watch 11 weeks to catch up with this stuff. Um, so I think I'm going to kind of rebrand it as kind of like a. Um, neglected home rehab or something like that um and then um does so that be part of the title and then whatever i'm doing in that particular video and um and i think i'm, I'm trying to find someone to do some music for me some uh intro music and maybe find someone that can do a logo for the channel um i have an idea what i want um so i think it'd be fun if i can find someone that can make that happen um but that's about that uh, I think we'll wrap this up. Um, thanks for watching. Um, hit the like, the subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Um, the more you click um, the likes and the and you comment on things, um, the more it pushes the videos to the front of the uh, the top of the pile in the algorithm. Um, so the more random people will uh, will see it as it pops up in there and watch up next stuff and whatnot. Um, that really helps out a lot. And I don't mind the questions. I like I like them. Um, so keep them coming. Um, thanks for watching. Um, it's been fun uh, communicating with y'all. Um, I'm I'm really enjoying it. Um, so thank you very much. Um, and I'll see you next week.